gardening isn't rocket science, but by some measures, it's more difficult than rocket science. Scientists can spend just a few years and get things right. Gardeners can spend a lifetime and struggle to get things right. What can you do to fix it? Well, join me today as I share with you 10 golden rules for gardening. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I'm a Colorado Zone 5B gardener. I've been gardening for more than 30 years, and I still struggle to get things right. But these golden rules really do help. Every year I abide by these rules, and every year my garden's a little bit better than it was the year before. The first golden rule is that soil is the key to garden success. Colorado State University reports that more than 80% of plant problems can be traced to the soil. If your soil is good, your plants are more likely to grow well. If your soil is poor, your plants are going to suffer. So, above all, you need to focus on your soil. I do a lot of gardening in raised beds because my native soil is extremely poor. I know that because I've done a soil test. I bring in good soil and amend that soil in these raised beds and my plants do pretty well. Better than they would if I just planted them in the ground and expected them to grow without any extra attention to the soil. You don't have to do your gardening in a raised bed. I have a new greenhouse and I'll be growing in the ground in this greenhouse. The very first thing I've done in getting this greenhouse ready to grow plants is work on the soil. Amend it. Make it better so that the plants will do better. The second golden rule is to put the right plant in the right place. In a garden like mine in Colorado, I can grow apple trees. Apple trees require chill hours through the winter to be able to flower and fruit. I wouldn't be able to grow apple trees in Florida or southern Texas because they don't get those chill hours. That's matching my environment and the plant to get the best results. In the vegetable garden, it's considering factors like sunlight. Most of our summer vegetables need at least six hours of direct sun every day. So you need to put your beds and the plants in those beds in such a way that they can get the amount of sun they need. But of course, in the landscape, there are plants that prefer shade. It's the same idea. You don't put shade-loving plants where they get full sun. You have to put those plants out of the sun. The right plant, the right place, and you'll have success. The third golden rule is to grow at the right time of year. You can think of it as right plant, right place, at the right time. Currently in my garden, it's below freezing. I'm kind of chilled right now. If this were as cold as my garden got during the winter, equivalent to about a zone eight, I could have plants in the ground right now that would be growing. Plants that can handle some cold temperatures. It would be appropriate to have plants at this time of year if this was as cold as it gets. But in my zone 5B, it gets much, much colder. So I can't grow plants right now because it gets colder than those plants can tolerate. This unheated greenhouse still gets pretty cold at night, too cold for me to grow right now. But it will be warming up soon and I'll be able to put some plants in the greenhouse before I can put them outside. You can't automatically grow all the plants in all locations at all times of year. You need to match the plant with the conditions that it needs. That might be in a greenhouse, it might be outside, but you have to do it at the right time of year. The fourth rule is to remember that your garden is unique. All of our gardens are unique. There is no other garden on the planet 
like the one I'm sitting in right now. So, as you're choosing your plants, as you're choosing location, as you're choosing the timing, you have to match it with your specific environment, with your location, with your garden setting. It's easy to watch videos and read books and be told how to garden, but you have to realize that the author or the video creator is living in a different location than you are. And so while the information may be useful, and you can probably use some aspects of it, be careful about blindly following gardening advice, because it may not be appropriate for your unique garden. And whether you're beginning to garden or expanding your garden, start small. Start small to grow big. This is a relatively new space. I've only been in this house for a couple years. The very first year that I gardened, I only had two beds. I grew in those two beds and in some buckets, and that's all I did so that I could figure out my weather patterns, the sun, and try to make sure that I was going to choose the right plants for this location. In the second year, I added some more beds, and I grew in these six raised beds, an in-ground bed over there, and some more containers. And then last year, I added more garden beds. That's the way to do it. Start small, and then just grow incrementally. Once you understand what you can do, and how to do it in your specific space. If you start too big, if I were to put all of this in all at once, well, there would have been things that I hadn't figured out yet, and the plants would have suffered because I wouldn't have been able to take care of everything until I figured it out, one bed at a time. The next rule is to grow what you want. Grow what you want, and try not to be influenced by others that tell you what you should be growing. There are so many videos on YouTube with the five plants you must be growing or the five things that need to be in your garden. Well, if it doesn't match your style of gardening, if it doesn't match what you want, then don't do it. If you have a favorite flower, grow that flower. If you have a favorite fruit, grow that fruit. A favorite vegetable, well, then it deserves a place in your garden. Go ahead and start accumulating seeds so you can Choose this, or this, or both, or all. It's totally up to you. If you are doing what you want to be doing, you're more likely to be happy in the garden. And if you're happier in the garden, you're more likely to spend time in the garden and be devoted to your plants. That attention will ensure those plants grow better and that you have more success in the garden. So do it your way. Don't let anyone else tell you what to do. Remember, each garden is unique. It's like an abstract painter choosing what colors to put on the canvas. That's you in your garden, choosing which packets are gonna be grown, which plants are gonna be put in, and what your garden is going to look like. And this leads us into the next golden rule, which is to plan. You should have a plan for the plants in your garden, for the beds in the garden, for all aspects of the garden, to include how you're going to garden. Come up with that plan. Now, you can have an all-encompassing plan of where all the beds will be. That's what I've done. I've got a five-year plan, and I know each year the beds that I'll be adding to the garden and the structures that I'll be adding to the garden. But you don't need to do it to that detail. You can just start with your couple beds and decide what plants are going to go in those beds and choose the seeds that are appropriate. And then get a calendar to decide when you're going to start those seeds and when you're going to harvest your plants. There's a lot of flexibility that needs to be part of gardening because the weather is going to be changing on a daily basis and insects are going to come in the garden. There's going to be things that you need to modify. Well, it's easier to modify a plan that you have in place than to try to figure everything out on the fly. It does add some structure and it does take some time, but 
on a cold winter day when you really can't be doing much outside anyway, go ahead and take some time and figure out what you're going to do in this gardening season and next gardening season, as far out as you're willing to go. Because with a plan, you're much more likely to have the success that you're looking for. The next golden rule is to have patience. Accept that gardening is going to take a while. When I put my fruit trees in, I knew it was going to be four or five years before I got my first fruit. I gardened for 30 years before I got my first greenhouse. Just accept that it's going to take time. Sure, there are some plants like a radish that you can put in the ground and harvest three or four weeks later. But to build a garden, to truly travel through this gardening journey, it's going to take a lot of time for you to develop as a gardener. The plants may grow and die in a single season, or they may grow and be alive for as long as you are a gardener. All along the way, you just need to be patient. Patient with how much you need to learn, patient with how the plants are growing, and patient with every aspect of gardening. The next rule is to observe. Observe everything. See what's happening in your garden. I come out to the garden every day, even in the winter when I'm cold. I want to see what's happening every day in the garden. And especially during the growing season, I'm observing the insects. I'm observing how the plants are growing. I'm observing every aspect of gardening that I can observe. You'd be amazed at what you can see if you just take the time and look. Too often with gardening, we put a seed in the ground and walk away, water the plant, and really don't think about it until after the plant has grown to the point that we're harvesting. Well, there's so much that goes on with that plant on a daily basis. So observe, observe everything around you, and you'll be a better gardener. The next golden rule ties in pretty closely with observation, and that's to document. Document all aspects of your gardening. You can use a garden journal to keep track of what you're doing and what you're planting and what you're observing in the garden. You can make notes on your calendar to keep track of when things happen. You can use your spiral notebook as to what seeds you're going to choose or whatever you want as far as recording and documenting your activities. When things start going wrong, well, figure out why they went wrong and how you're going to correct it and write it down so that you don't repeat mistakes. And as you experiment and try new things, keep track of it. Document all of the things you're doing in your garden so that you can repeat the successes as much as possible. You have a particular activity or a particular plant that you want to repeat every year, well, it makes it so much easier when it's documented. And then at the beginning of the season, as you're developing your plan, you can go ahead and just refer to your garden journal and say, oh yeah, I forgot I was going to do that. That's now part of my plan. Documentation can take many forms. My videos are a form that I use to document what's happening in my garden and what I'm doing in my garden. I have thousands of pictures that I've taken over the years, before and after pictures, and a whole bunch of during pictures. Pictures of plants in all phases of growth. Pictures of harvest to keep track of how much I harvested. Pictures of me just enjoying myself in the garden. Document everything and it's so much better to have fun in the garden and keep doing the things that you have fun doing. Those are the golden rules. Rules that if you abide by, it'll make you a happier gardener and a more successful gardener. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>